Hey friends, Derek from Bomb Socks here with another day of Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So as we're finishing up this week of the Come Follow Me, I love a good story of change. I love to see people change from bad to good. And we see a lot of that happen in the scriptures. Right here in the Book of Mormon is where we see it happen really well as you got this guy here, Zeezrom, who makes a big change. In fact, he becomes a major player in the gospel moving forth. So I guess the question is this, how do you get someone who is expert at the devices of the devil change his heart to the point where he starts desiring salvation in Jesus Christ. Well, I go back to this quote often. You'll hear me say it again. The quote is from Boyd K. Packer. True doctrine understood changes attitudes and behavior. I cannot stress that enough. If you really want to see someone change, you don't focus on the behaviors. You focus on the doctrine. And then you let the Holy Ghost do what he does really well as you share the doctrine of Christ. The doctrine of Christ has the ability to be able to change a person's heart. Now, this story and this interaction between Amulek and Zeezrom is done so well. In fact, the church did a video about this in the Book of Mormon videos. And so I want to show you just a little part of this right here to show you this interaction interaction. And you can literally watch the actor who portrays the Ezra does a great job here as you see him at the beginning, very divisive and very angry. And then what happens is you watch a physical change take place in his countenance. So like Alma the Elder, when he was listening to Abinadi, you watch that change take place. As Abinadi taught the doctrine of Jesus Christ to him, you're going to watch Alma the Younger do the same thing here. So I want you to think about this, just like we thought about when I taught you that before. What do you think? Alma and Amulek taught Zeezrom that caused him to change. What in this interchange really caused Zeezrom to make some changes in his heart? So look for that in these scriptures right here. In fact, here's your scripture references that this basically takes us through. And you go through and watch these things. You can read through them as well as you're going along. But see what you think causes Zeezrom to change. And then we'll talk about it right after this. Thou sayest there is a true and living God? Yea, there is a true and living God. Is there more than one God? No. How knowest thou these things? An angel hath made them known unto me. Who is he that shall come? Is it the Son of God? Yea. Shall he save his people in their sins? He shall not, for it is impossible for him to deny his word. See that ye remember these things. For he said, there is but one God. Yet he saith that the Son of God shall come, but he shall not save his people, as though he had authority to command God. Behold, thou hast lied. And I say unto thee again that he cannot save them in their sins. Now, if it had not been for the plan of redemption which was laid from the foundation of the world, there could have been no resurrection of the dead. But there was a plan of redemption laid, which shall bring to pass the resurrection of which has been spoken. God gave unto men commandments, after having made known unto them the plan of redemption, that they should not do evil. And he has said, If ye will repent and harden not your hearts, then will I have mercy upon you through mine only begotten Son. Therefore, whosoever repenteth and hardeneth not his heart, he shall have claim upon mercy through mine only begotten Son unto a remission of his sins, and these shall enter into my rest. I would that you would humble yourselves before God and bring forth fruit meet for repentance, that you may also enter into that rest. Now is the time to repent, for the day of salvation draweth nigh, and I wish from the inmost part of my heart that you would hearken unto my words and cast off your sins and not procrastinate the day of your repentance, but that you would humble yourselves before the Lord and call on his holy name and watch and pray continually that ye may not be tempted above that which ye can bear, and thus be led by his Holy Spirit, becoming humble, meek, submissive, patient, full of love, and all long suffering, having faith on the Lord, having a hope that ye shall receive eternal life, having the love of God always in your hearts that ye may be lifted up at the last day and enter into his rest. 
Well, like I said, something changes Zeezrom's heart here. As you see the doctrines of the fall, the redemption, the plan being taught very clearly, resurrection, restoration, the judgments of God. The effects of these words of Alma and Amulek made a remarkable change in Zeezrom, and they will make a change on everyone else who follows it as well. Now, one of the things I think really could have been the catalyst to help Zeezrom change is about verses 34 through 37 of Alma chapter 11. Zeezrom said, shall he save his people in their sins. And Amulek answered and said unto him, I say unto you, he shall not, for it is impossible for him to deny his word. You go down to verse number 37. I say unto you again that he cannot save them in their sins, for I cannot deny his word. He has said that no unclean thing can inherit the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, how can ye be saved except ye inherit the kingdom of heaven? Therefore, ye cannot be saved in your sins. And then he talks about how Jesus Christ in verse number 40 will come to the world to redeem his people and he will take upon him the transgressions of those who believe on his name. And these are they that shall have eternal life and salvation cometh to none else. Now, when I think about this idea that you can't cannot be saved in your sins. I'm reminded of a talk from Elder Alan Haney back in October of 2015. It's called Remembering in Whom We Have Trusted. Some of you might remember this talk. Elder Haney talks about when he was a young kid, he went to his grandmother's house, his four foot 11 grandmother's house. And he had been, they'd been rolling in the mud and playing around and he tries to go into his grandmother's house as a muddy mess. And his grandma would not let him into the house. He says, I was wet, muddy, cold, and in my childhood imagination thought I might die in my own backyard. Finally, I asked her what I had to do to come into the house. Before I knew it, I found myself standing in the backyard while my grandmother sprayed me off with a hose. After what seemed like an eternity, my grandmother pronounced me clean and let me come into the house. It was warm in the house. I was able to put on dry, clean clothes. Standing outside my house, being sprayed off by my grandmother was unpleasant and uncomfortable. Being denied the opportunity to return to be with our Father in Heaven because we choose to remain in or dirtied by a mud hole of sin would be eternally tragic. We should not deceive ourselves about what it takes to return and remain in the presence of our Father in Heaven. We have to be clean. So perhaps this message of repentance is exactly what causes Zeezrom to change. As Alma and Amulek both taught about the doctrine of Christ, which is faith, repentance, baptism, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, and enduring to the end. Perhaps that is the thing that is going to help people change their lives. And that is what caused Zeezrom to be a man who is expert in the devices of the devil to now starting to desire salvation in the kingdom of God. And Zeezrom, like I said, becomes a major player in the next few chapters as we study about what happens in the city of Ammonihah. So if you really want to see a person change their behavior, stop focusing on the behaviors and start focusing on the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And that is where you will see them change. I can testify to you that that is true. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for sharing these messages. We are so grateful that you do that. And if you like what you see, please click that like button, get this message out there. And you got to go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. You guys are awesome. Godspeed. And we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.